All right. Hopefully that's a little better. Let's go up one. Let's go up a little bit further. So chop the top and noggin off. Let's go up a little further. Sorry guys. I'm doing this on my phone. So I'm not going to be able to see a lot of them. I've seen DJ Beacon come in. Hey Jason. Well, guys, I'm out here in western Kansas. They kicked us off the rig, sent us home. Can't get home because of the blizzard. So I'm in Waukini, Kansas at one of the last hotel rooms available. Which we'll say is not the best in the world, but it's serviceable. They don't got Wi-Fi, so I got to do this on my phone. So, went downtown to the liquor store. Which they had two liquor stores. One was open. So, what better time to have a class or two? Yeah, you are definitely right. You have to bear with me. I'm trying to read this at distance, and it's hard. I hope you can hear me fine. So. Anyway, they had two liquor stores. I went downtown and one was open and old Jack Daniels about the best thing they had in there. I got it for $53.99. It's the single barrel barrel proof. Oh, thank you for letting me know. So I figure, what the heck. Went there and then I went to a bakery. See what they had at the bakery here in Waukini, Kansas, which is let's just say uh not very big but they were getting ready to close so i bought a couple of things and then she threw in a piece of free german chocolate cake fresh made and i love the german chocolate cake robert which of the jack daniels do you yeah I'm going to bet it's probably going to be this one. I have another bottle unopened, but it's an older edition. Uh, I don't know. Jack Daniels is all right. It's always serviceable. I don't know. You know, Gentleman Bet Jack's a little better than the standard Jack, and I really can't say. I've had the edition two, three, four, the distiller's editions. I've had two, three, and four, and it was either two or three. I drank about 10% of the bottle gave the rest to my son. It wasn't really all that impressive to me. So, I don't remember which one it was. I think I only got one bottle of that left. I think it's the four. So, but anyway, this Jack Daniels here is 65.20% alcohol by volume, 130.4 proof. And uh, I was reading on here somewhere. That, oh, this is the newest one, I think. Bottling date was 12 13 18. So this is brand new. Barrel number 18 9494. Now, guys, I'm not going to be able to see the chat that well, so I'm sorry if I don't reply to a lot of things because my phone just doesn't do chat so well. Had to had to go to landscape mode for this, which was. I didn't understand it. I don't do this very often. So, anyway, let's pour some dram of this. And after we get a little bit of taste going on, mm, cool. I can tell you just by that, this is going to be good. I know everybody makes a comment about me doing that on the court, but I don't like to waste anything. Oh, there is caramel just rolling off that. I mean rolling off that. No problem with responses. It's been many decades since I've had a JT. This ain't like no Jack Daniels you've had before. Or I've had before. Oh my. The caramel. And cinnamon. It's reminiscent of any, I don't know what the age is on it, but it's reminiscent of any medium length aged high proof bourbon. I know it's a Tennessee whiskey and I love my Tennessee whiskeys, but this is right up there with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I do like to... So, if I ever give you a bottle, 
clean all the boogies off the cork. Just turn it upside down and let the thing, any of my germs off the cork. Just turn it upside down and shake it. Alcohol will kill it. Because <laughs> I do that frequently. I don't do it with screw caps, only the corks. <laughs> didn't realize you would be doing I didn't plan on doing this. This is just, I'm bored. I'm in a motel room. It's blowing. The wind's blowing 60 mile an hour. We can't trip pipe on the rig. Blizzard's blowing in, so they had to shut down and drive the rig last night. I came in real late. This was about the only hotel room open. Uh, and they don't even have a refrigerator or a microwave in here, so I got my water and uh, milk in the snow out there, out front in the snow drift. This is so different. You get the alcohol on the nose, but it's not the 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 nose and the way it transitions to you is more like it's I'm hesitant to say it, but it's more like an Elijah Craig barrel proof. Uh in the way it transitions in the nose. Now I'm not you know, I'm not we're gonna let it open up a minute or two before we dig in. But uh that transition in the nose is, is just really reminiscent of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of all the barrel proofs I've had right now. It's just escaping me. George Dickel. Nah, that, that's a little different flavor than this. It comes across a little differently than this does. Uh, the Wild Turkey uh, Rare Breeds are... It doesn't transition in the nose like this either. I'm telling you, you get the oak now. A little bit of that. You're always going to get that reminiscent char they got. The oak is starting to come through well. Gosh. Let's see. I can't read it. Dang, it flashes up so fast I can't read it, guys. I'm so sorry. I can't keep up. Hi, Amy. I seen George a while ago. Oh, man. I had to re redecorate their hotel room a little bit. I had to move this, the chair. <laughs> I had to get this thing ready. Oh, my. It's not all that cold outside other than the wind is blow wind is blowing about 60 mile an hour, but I think it's only about 29 degrees. It was 30 degrees when I came in last night, but this morning when I went traveling around, it said 29. At my, and if anything, it's gonna come up a degree or two since the sun's more came up later. I just got a new neighbor, somebody else came in. It says DNA genetics. He must have made it as far as he could, too, on the highway. But I'm going to put that up so you guys can see a little more better. Okay, now the caramel, where it was more rich and caramel and note up front, I'm also noticing more, you know, caramel's made from... I think it's sugar and water, and you you uh, cook it down until it becomes a caramel. But there's a little more, like more like a molasses thing, which brings me to more of maybe a uh, brown sugar thing going on with this. Because it's 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 somewhere caught between there. I get some of the lighter caramel notes, and then I get some of the brown sugar notes as well. Oh my! Oh yeah. Well, like I said, I only paid. $53.99 for it, and they had the single barrel, non-barrel proof in the same place with the little Glencairn Gat glass, and they only had that for $49.99, so $4 difference. It made it was definitely a buy. Like I said, it's the newest iteration that I know of. And one at home I've just never opened. I've got several boxes of Jack Daniels single barrels that I've just picked up here and there, and I've just never... I just never really opened any of them. I still got one of the 20, I think it's 2013 or 2014 when they made the Jack Daniels tree outside and they barreled them for single barrels for Christmas holiday. I got one of those at home I picked up for. Back then it was only like 
So 2014, I think it was the last year they did it, maybe. I think it was. And I think I paid 35 bucks for it. Wow, $99, that would be a that would be a hard one to swallow for this. Knowing what I can get it for here. Most of the time you see it, it's around 65 in Wichita. But out here in little towns, little towns are weird. <laughs> in that same liquor store, they had two. They had an Abelard double cask, uh, 12, which I've had before. I've never did a review on it, but I just I don't like it. That was 60 some dollars. That was like $65. Then they had an old Jura 10 Origin. There's only two single malts they had in the whole store. And it was $49.99. And both of those, because they're scotches, they get a higher price. And little towns out here, they'll sit on the shelf till they finally decide to move them. And once they don't sell for five, ten years, then they'll throw them in their little, in their little uh, sale bin or whatever because in the sale bin i found an old overholt rye which i went ahead and bought that too while i was there and it was 10.99 for an old overholt rye and i thought that's a pretty good buy for that for 750 but i'm not it's in the truck and i'm, I'm going to save that because i have an old overholt bonded that i want to do a side-by-side -side comparison with i kind of been waiting to buy the the original before i dug in All right, I think we're about ready to try it. The ethanol's calming down somewhat on the nose. I've been looking for that characteristic banana that I always get with Jack Daniels. And I'm not getting that on the nose. If anything, I'm getting a slight cherry. Oh, my. Yeah, you know, I'm getting a slight cherry. I'm getting the vanilla. Get the vanilla. Get that caramel brown sugar thing going on. I get the oak. Get the vanilla. I get a slight cherry note with this. I don't know if I've mentioned anything else. And cinnamon. Oh, yes, yeah, cinnamon. And there's just a little bit of the alcohol tingle. It's nothing. For 130 proof, 130.4 proof. It's not coming across like that in the nose. That is some deep color. That is a dark mahogany brown. Oh. Just then, just then, I do get some of the high proof. But it is like pop and gone, and it finishes in that, after it does that, that cinnamon really shines. Get the vanilla, get the caramel brown sugar thing, it's falling pretty much. There's the banana, there's the Jack Daniels banana, just got it just then. We're starting top of that finish there. Don't got the cherry. The cherry doesn't translate. Not well at all. There's a little raw cocoa in it. As it goes into the finish, I'm getting just a little bit of raw cocoa. Hi, Danny. Nail polish remover. <laughs> it's acetone. It's acetone, yes. Yes, nail polish remover is acetone. When I used to work in the aircraft industry, we use it to remove a lot of uh, a lot of grease and different things of that nature. You'd use it by the gallon. That's tone, ketone. There's something else we use. I can't remember. Denatured alcohol. Dang, this is good. It's real good. I 
I'm really enjoying this, guys. Give me just a second. Let's have a little fun with it. Put a little snow in it. We'll see what that'll do for it. It don't need no water. We'll see what a little bit of snow will do it. It kills the ethanol vapors all together. I walked by the little old Chinese lady that runs the motel. She's been going up and down. I wish she'd get a snow shovel out. I'd do, I'd do my own snow shovel if she'd get it. But I doubt she does. Oh, the vanilla really comes in now. The vanilla and the cinnamon really, that comes to the forefront. There's something kind of herbal. Almost like a bay leaf. No, I don't think it's, it comes across sort of in that genre of spices. weird. Maybe it's radioactive snow. <laughs> My god, that's... Get the charcoal now. <laughs> For whatever reason, that really made the charcoal just on that sip just really you it really became very prominent. That maple charcoal they use. There's the banana now. I gotta be honest, I like it better without the water and the snow. Personally. Let's see how it does with the German chocolate cake. She said, I, I got a bear claw and a, and a beer rock for lunch. And I ate those and I came back. That's been about an hour and a half, two hours ago. She had that German chocolate cake there. She says, if we have the blizzard, like they say, I ain't gonna see nobody for two days. So here, I'm giving away pieces where I can. Just made this morning. And so, freshly made German chocolate cake from a little hometown bakery. With the little Jack Daniels. It works. It may not be the whiskey couch guy from South Africa that does all the pairings. Actually, that works pretty good. We're going to freshen this up a little bit without the snow. What the heck? 18063. Oh, that's just the time date. Bottling line. Hmm. That's kind of weird. <laughs> hmm. Now we're back to the more intense flavors. That's a good thing. One more piece of this cake.
the walnuts and the coconut she's using for the frosting in that, the sugar, walnuts and coconut. That counterpoints well with the undiluted Jack Daniels. The chocolate and the cake gets lost in the gets lost in the in the transition points. And I think it's largely because there is a little bit of uh, raw cocoa when you taste that in the finish. It's there, but the highlight really is in the icing and the coconut and the uh, walnut she uses. Really good, guys. Really good combo. I got a book I'm going to read tonight, and I've got a long night ahead of me. Can't do the nuts, but enjoy chocolate with bourbon. Yeah. 14 inches in MB now. I don't know where MB is. I'm sorry. I have to say it's better without any water. Myrtle Beach. Oh, that's rain. After Hurricane Hugo. Hmm. I'm hesitant to say how much. They're saying six to nine inches of snow, but the wind blows out here in western Kansas so bad. And we are on the face of this building on the south side, so it's all blowing over, and then it's piling a big snow drift right there around my truck. So to tell how much really is going to settle, you're not going to be able to. Because any place that's flat, they could do a, go out there and stick a ruler in the measure, that's going to be pretty much bare. You'll have an inch or two of snow out there. It'll pile them on big drifts. And it's just... It's hard to tell. The wind is the wind is really what slows down the rig. When I'm out on a rig like this, if you get high winds... And this is... They've closed the rig. They're not going to open it back up till Monday. So I'm stuck here till Monday. But when they got the high winds like they have out here... It drifts, it closes, the road's closed. You can't really trip pipe in the wind. And tripping pipe means when we run the pipe down the hole for drilling, we gotta take it all back out. We finished a test before this started. We're really close to the very end of this well. We still got to log and do a few other things. The log means you run a, I know you guys are probably not interested, but in the logging, in the logging process, we'll run a wire line and log down the hole. And it's gonna tell us several things. It's, <laughs> It's going to tell us porosity within the rock. It's going to tell us what type of rock we're looking at. It's going to tell us potential for hydrocarbons within the rock. And a microlog will give you some sort of sense of permeability. It's not real accurate, but kind of gives you an idea of permeability. How are bourbon prices and availability in the Big Apple? Oh, he's talking to somebody else. So anyway... <clears throat> That process usually takes four hours. We're going to open hole well complete what we're working on now. And that process means we will have to run it down. Wrong Manhattan. <laughs> anyway, we'll have to run down bottom hole gambits on each run. And that's going to increase the logging time to five, five and a half hours minimum. Anyway, that I digress. But we can't trip pipe back in and pipe out of the hole. Can't log, do really anything until this wind calms down. I've been out and we've had snowstorms where it's dumped six, eight inches of snow on us. Without the wind, we just take a cat, bulldoze the road out. We can drag anybody in and out we need. But once the wind does what it's doing today, we, we're pretty much done until it's this whole mess is over. Once it's over, they'll bulldoze the road out. Then it'll start to thaw out and then I'll be driving through eight inches of mud and all the other fun stuff. But that's why I have four-wheel drive. I used to not. I used to get drugged and stuck a whole lot. Years ago, when I first started this, I had a two-wheel drive Chevy. Now I have a four-wheel drive Chevy. <laughs> anyway. I hope I'm not boring you guys too much with all this crap. Bad flooding in September, Hurricane Florence. Hmm.
That cinnamon really comes through in the back part of the palate. The cinnamon and the char, I'm really noticing. As it sits in the glass longer, well, actually, it's not in the glass that long. I guess I refresh it a bit. The cinnamon and the maple. If you don't like the Lincoln County process and you don't like the maple char that they use in Tennessee, this is probably not going to be up your alley. Me, I don't mind it so much. I like good Tennessee whiskey, I always have. Uh, but I can understand that. I, I understand that people don't. And I, I, that's, you know, that's acceptable. Everybody has their different palates. Everybody likes things for different reasons. But, I like it, but I like a lot of whiskey, guys. I know you guys, people that are on here know, I mean, watch my videos and stuff. I mean, I do everything. I do scotch, blended scotch, cheap, blended American whiskey. I do more expensive American whiskey, bourbons, uh, you know, rye. I kind of cover the whole gambit because there's things I can find I like about each that appeals to my palate. You know, I, I, I have no trouble making those transitions. and It's never been an issue for me. It was when I was younger, back in the 80s. I mainly drank bourbon. I, a friend of mine gave me some scotch. And I know I've said it before. Y'all you all certainly heard it before. And I, it was Johnny Walker Black, and then he gave me... Then he bought some Johnny Walker Red at a later date, and we tried that, and both of them was... I didn't care about either one of them. I always enjoy your reviews. Well, thank you, DJ. But, you know, as I got older, my palate changed. My palate changed a lot. I mean, all those years, you know, guys, with the bourbon prices and everybody suddenly looking back at old bottles and finding older bottles, and even I do it now. I mean, I've always kind of been eyeballing, but I never really paid that much attention until about three, four years ago. All the old wild turkey variations I had in the 80s is... Would, is and I look at all those bottles from the donut. I, I was still drink. We'd still find those occasionally. The Wild Turkey 101s. I'd occasionally drink an 80 or an 80. Well, the 81's a newer one. I think it was the 80 back then. I'd occasionally drink an 80, but mostly it was always Wild Turkey 101 or Wild Turkey 101. I mean, I'll be honest. So then, somewhere along, I started drinking with Jeff Bush. Jeff Bush drank Weller like it was water back in the early 90s. And, uh, I mean, he would drink a... He would drink a fifth at night. I mean, I've never seen somebody... I mean, I don't mind having a couple of drinks a night. He could put it away. and he, he just steadily put it away back then. Jeff was a good friend. We played golf together when I used to play golf back then. and We worked together at Boeing. And, uh... I was still mainly drinking just, just mainly wild turkey. I would do Jim Beam once in a while. Never, you know, the white label, the basic Jim Beam, or the black, the double label black. And that was when it was still now. Now that's one that when we started phasing it out four or five years ago, I started keeping my eyes out and always buying. And whenever I see a bottle of the eight-year-old double aged Jim Beam, I buy it. I just do. It's that's one of the most enjoyable drinks I that I've over the years other than Wild Turkey 101 as far as bourbons go. So I've always been I've always enjoyed those two. This is good. Jack Daniels, you know you drink it with Coke when I was younger and that's just what you did. I mean you didn't uh you didn't uh drink it like this. And I didn't know anybody that ever drank Jack Daniels straight unless we were just sitting around doing shots and being stupid. I like that topper. That's a cool topper. <laughs> it's even a pretty cool topper. <laughs> but as as you know, as you get older, your ideas, your mindset, your changes, everything changes, and how you approach things. Even I ain't no spring chicken no more, so I have to be careful. Guys, this stuff is good. It grows on you by the third one. Trust me.
it's pretty much in it or the anesthesia and it's whatever numb to my tongue <laughs> this point you're gonna because it's 130 proof your receptors of what you're going to pick up now is much less involved than when I first started out and that's always the case plus I haven't had nothing to drink in five days I never drink when I'm out on the well I never do that uh, business is business and pleasure is pleasure and you don't mix the two that's just it's just the way life works but uh, I first drank uh, to this drink there is a change and it's because your tongue slowly becomes numb and your receptors start to dial down hmm. but your nose and your olfactory senses stay in pretty good shape I'm still getting I'm still getting that brown sugar caramel play on the nose. It doesn't change. I still don't notice the charcoal till I drink either. Myself. Hmm. The vanilla, faintly on the nose now that I've, it's more prominent on the palate. Still get the faint cherries though. I'm gonna still get the wood. They, I think they aged these in a higher part of the warehouse is what I've heard. Says Rick number L8. Doesn't really tell you which warehouse it comes from. I don't think, I don't see it anywhere on here. But if you've ever been to Jack Daniels, and I have, when you drive out of that valley there in Tennessee, when you drive away from Lynchburg, there is just Rick House after Rick House after Rick House after Rick House. You go up that, there, I forget how many I counted. I, I'm not even going to venture. It was 20 plus, just Rick Houses alone from there. And that's just the Rick Houses you can see from the road. There's more Rick Houses back up in that holler. They ain't no doubt about it. But it's it's a fun place to go. I wore my overalls. They told me I should work there because I was wearing overalls. <laughs> that was kind of cute. Some lady grabbed me by my overalls and started dragging me. She goes, oh, you don't work here, do you? Well, you should. <laughs> my wife was just laughing. She thought it was funny. Well, I'm going to finish this, guys. I'm going to sign off. And uh, I need to give Mrs. Scout a call, let her know I'm alive. She should be back home by now. I want to check on her, too. She went to the store. My phone is so small and so far away that reading these messages goes quick. Really like the Buna 12. Yes, Buna Hobbin 12 was good. I did a review on that three, four months ago. I really liked it. It's it's a very unassuming, you know because of Isla you're expecting one thing, but it really doesn't deliver what you're thinking you're going to get. Bunahaben 12 is so, you know, it's, it's it's one of those right curves as far as Isla goes. You know, you got your typical Lafroig, your Ardbeg, your Kilhoman, Lagavulin, all those are bringing a certain amount of level of stronger peats. Kalila, it brings the peat, and that's my favorite, but it's not quite as dialed as the other ones is, and it always comes more across as a smoky peat, more like you would um, when you're smoking meats or something. Smoked ham especially, I get that in Kalila, in the Kalila 12. I really like Kalila. I'm, I'm, I've made, never made no bones about it. Uh, but Bunahaben, you're kind of looking for the for a level of peat that you're just not going to get unless you buy one of the special lines of Toich or whatever that other Chub 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 Chubinock, I think's how they pronounce it. You just don't get them otherwise. Yeah, yeah, it's it's 
it's definitely an acquired thing. My very first Pete experience was Kalila 15 Signatory. I picked up it, comes in a silver can, non-chill filtered edition. It was a 1991 or 92 edition of it. It was a 15-year-old Kalila, and it was the very first Kalila, er, very first peated whiskey I'd ever bought. I took the cap, the cork, and when I started to take the cork off, it broke. And I think I bought it in 13 or 14, 14 maybe. And the cap broke on it. I was like, oh, crap, what have I got here, you know? So I dig the crack cap out and just gently, you know, if you take a little thin knife blade like a, a, like a, a Swiss Army knife, one of the little ones you get for your... Uh, your pin knife you get for your uh, your keychain and you take that in at an angle you can slowly start to move it out if you can't go around it gently just a little bit you don't want to go all the way through I've did sort of a video on this or you can use a cork stop or depend on this cork was very compromised though it was sealed at the top but it was the last probably quarter inch of that cork down in the bottom that was the problem the rest of it was sealed tight at the top, and when I gave it the little twist to pull it off, it just literally twisted in two. But anyway, I got the cork out, and I drained it through the bread sifter. My wife's bread sifter is what I used back then to drain the cork pieces out. And then redumped it back in the bottle. And uh, the peat was well restrained on that because it was 15 years old. So I went into that gently. I didn't go into peat with a dumping in, jumping in with art bag tin or Lafroy tin right away and that peaty smoke that I had gotten you know you get hints here and there in your normal scotches I'm talking scotch and got a Jack Daniels in front of me uh, it don't it does not have that level of intensity that one didn't have and it was truly a great experience because I got a lot of other things besides just the peat in there and so it was a good segue from that to the more intense beats. And after that, after I had my first cast strength, the uh, Lafroy 10, it was all downhill. <laughs> That's good stuff. Still is to this day. I don't, I don't know anybody that likes Pete that does not like Lafroy cast strength series. I mean, it's just, it's their best expression, in my opinion. The 18 is good. The 15 is all right. But that 10 cast strength is just dynamite. And George had several at the Scotch Test Dummies, several of the uh, Karchus series. I tried two or three of those. I don't remember which ones I tried. That was a blur. I don't remember a lot. Uh, they were all good, though. I've only got the one Karchus. That's the 200th anniversary. I've never opened it yet. Well, guys, I need to wrap it up. So, cheers to everyone. I need to get off of here. Call the wife. Finally got in and figure out. And <laughs> got figured out. I laugh out loud. Yeah, I did. Eat more cake and cheers. I will. I'll finish the cake. I love German chocolate coconut. See you later, guys.